Are you looking for an IPS 27-inch 1080p HDR gaming monitor that has FreeSync and has a remarkable 1 millisecond motion picture response time and a great 2 millisecond great to great response time? Well, I think the BenQ EX2710 should be on your shortlist. It is available as a 25-inch for $250 and the 27-inch is $300 on Amazon. And I will leave links in the description. Compared to competing monitors, it offers HDR10, which has a 10-bit color depth and 1.07 billion colors, versus 8-bit and its 16.7 million colors. This will provide better color graduation in darker and light scenes. And certainly, if you work with Adobe RGB or DCI P3 color space, or you want to take advantage of HDR, that is the way to go. What you get in the box is of course the panel, the stand, and the plastic base. You get an HDMI cable, a power cable, a quick start guide, and a plastic cover that hides the ports, which are located at the back and face downwards. You have an audio jack if you want to use headphones or speakers. You also have two HDMI 2.0 ports and a DisplayPort 1.2. Now you also do have two 2.5 watt speakers that are adequate, and I was able to game with them okay as I was sitting fairly close, but watching a Netflix show, I was glad I did have the closed captions on. Now the volume can be adjusted using the joystick at the back. Either side of this joystick, you have the power button and an input select button. It is also visa mount compatible using the 100mm by 100mm visa pattern. Also on the back, there is a slot for your lock should you be using it at an event or a LAN party. At the top, there is a ventilation grill. It's dark grey in colour and the plastic bezel is only 2mm thick and the black border around the screen is another 5mm so bear that in mind if you're using a multi-monitor setup. You can tilt the panel 20 degrees away from you and 5 degrees towards you plus 20 degrees swivel left and right which is useful if you have any glare which you can get despite its non-glossy display. Its max height is 17cm or just short of 7 inches so you can actually have some speakers underneath. Alternatively, its height can be taken all the way down till it hits the base. At the front, below the screen, is a light sensor that can adjust the brightness of the screen depending upon the lighting conditions. Now, BenQ calls this Brightness Intelligent Plus. As you would expect from an IPS display, viewing angles are very good and it also has a decent color gamut. I've measured 99% of sRGB, 77% of Adobe RGB and 77% of the P3 color space. According to BenQ, its brightness at 100% is 400 nits. Now I measured 304 nits, which is a little bit disappointing, but in person it looks bright enough. Looking at my backlight bleed test, I would say there was a little bit at the top of the screen, but to be fair, I could not see it under normal use, and I also saw no dead or stuck pixels. The various menu presets are available by pressing in the joystick at the back. Here, you can change the color mode if you don't have HDR set within Windows itself. They include presets for various game types, like first-person shooters, RPG, racing games, and there's a standard mode, sRGB mode, MacBook and ePaper should you want to read, plus various HDR modes. As you change presets, the brightness setting changes. Now the AMA option stands for Advanced Motion Accelerator, which is the overdrive, and there are three settings. Here's the effect on an image when changing these preset modes when in 8-bit color mode. If you want a setting that looks good in most situations, I prefer the HDR mode. It offers a good balance of brightness and colors, showing good details in the shadow and bright areas. Changing to 10-bit color depth by turning on HDR within the window settings can make text difficult to see unless you choose the HDR option. And again, I like the look of the standard HDR when looking at the same image of the cat. The HDR presets can also be chosen by pressing the HDRI button on the front. Now this uses an algorithm to make standard definition content into HDR. Here is a dark scene that when HDR is off, the person's face is very bright. And as you choose for example Cinema HDR, you see more details on the face, but the details in the dark areas are lost. So again, I prefer the regular HDR setting that is a nice middle ground. Now let's look at gaming, because after all, this is a 144Hz FreeSync panel with fast response times. BenQ uses a strobed backlight on the EX2710, which allows it to confirm a fast 1 millisecond motion picture response time, which, which provides a pretty much blur-free image in fast-paced games, and indeed, this coupled with a G-Sync via FreeSync provides a great gaming experience. 
In my ghosting test, I would say that it performs slightly better than the 144Hz panel on my Omen 15T. Now I tested a racing game in 8-bit mode, so I could see how the colour presets looked. The racing mode does show more details in the cockpit itself. With emulated HDR, using the game HDR preset, it darkens the cockpit further and emphasises the visuals on the track. So there are many options to adjust the image to the one that you prefer the most. Now I did play a lot of Battlefield 5, swapping between DX11, DX12, FPS mode and various HDR modes. FPS mode in DX11 seemed to overbrighten everything, and in my opinion it made it look worse than what we see on a regular 144Hz panel. Switching to DX12, but still using FPS mode, it did look a lot better. Much better shadows and colours than using the DX11. Switching to game HDR mode, even in DX11, the game looked just as good, so if you have HDR in the window settings switched on, this mode could well be your default gaming mode. We see much the same in Far Cry 5. FPS mode makes the colours look rather washed out, whilst turning on HDR in the game, and using the game HDR mode, the image looks much more realistic. So how would I sum up the BenQ EX2710? Well, for those running a GPU that is more suited to 1080p gaming, I think it is a good monitor. You do have plenty of image presets to suit your taste, but I suspect many might just keep HDR turned on, as that is a good middle ground for most things. Now, personally, I tend to stick to one setting and forget about it, but it's good that you have the option to change should you wish. Gaming was smooth and I saw no tearing or blurring, and although the speakers are adequate, I suspect many will be wearing headphones or using external speakers anyway. The panel has good adjustability to suit your height and to position so there is no glare. It was a pleasure watching videos. It has good colours and will also be suitable for editing videos or photo work, and a 10-bit panel is much appreciated. Thank you for watching. If you are new to my channel and like my video, consider subscribing. Bye now.